What is happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, and today I'm joined by Casey from Georgia Bushcraft, um, Griffin Pocket Tool, uh, Georgia Bushcraft Coffee. Yep. Um, Bushcraft coffee, all, all sorts of good stuff. So you guys have got some really cool stuff going on. And uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second. But if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos and introduce you to really cool people like Casey here. So without further ado, let's light it up. So Casey, thank you for joining us today, man. We appreciate Happy to be that. here, brother. Yeah. Thanks now, for letting me come and hang out. You guys have got some really cool stuff, and we're going to get into all that. But first, I want I want to talk about how you guys got started, um, not only with Griffin Pocket Tool, but also with the whole Georgia Bushcraft scene. How yeah. did you guys get started? Absolutely, man. So I worked in the outdoor industry for uh, I don't know, probably five, six years or so, and. Um, uh, in a small store outside of Atlanta and really Georgia Bushcraft started from customers coming in the store. They just like us, you know, we're, we're knife nerds and love the outdoors and gear. And, uh, and so these guys are coming to the store, they buy the stuff and I always wanted to go out and find somebody to go camping with. And, um, so really we all just kind of banded together and started camping together back in 2012, which actually happens to be our 10 year this year, which is insane. That's really cool. Imagine. Um, so that, that's how Georgia Bushcraft started, you know, and, and since then we've, we've started doing gatherings and, uh, our last one we just had in November was the largest we've ever had. I had over 500 people there just from all over the country just to come out and learn skills, you know, be part of the community. Um, and that's really what Georgia Bushcraft is. You that's know, we, awesome. So, that's how. and so I'm guessing that's, that's where, um, your innovation as far as like your pocket tool and that kind of thing come about you saw yep. needs yep absolutely and you saw a need for a product and you filled that need mm -hmm. with a design from your mind basically yeah so so um so back seven years ago so this may will be seven years since we launched our first kickstarter for the yep. original uh, griffin pocket tool and i'll be honest um, i do remember that i remember seeing it initially on facebook mm -hmm. and uh and uh, as a kickstarter and i was like man that is that is really cool, and I actually got one of the one of the first ones that was made for um, key bar. Mm -hmm. yep. um, it was one that one was stowaway tools. Yeah, yeah, the stowaway tool for key bar. I was like, oh, this is that thing I saw on mm -hmm. Kickstarter, and I bought my first key bar. I still have That's it, awesome. and uh, I still have that Griffin Pocket tool. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, and I used that one for the longest time until you gave me this one. Oh yeah, and the latest one right there. I've been using this one since uh, since you gave this one to me last year mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Randall's Adventure yep. Training. Yeah, yep. At the so weekend. yeah, yep. so um, so yeah. So that's the Adventure Tool. That was the latest one we did our uh, our last Kickstarter on, um, and that more or less was kind of like the 2.0 from the original. A lot of people. Um, yeah. Check that so out. we'll show there's the original right there on the close up. And then this is the the newest version. Yep. So uh, so originally you could see that we started with just a regular hook to keep your uh, your keys on your belt loop. Uh, and then kind of how it originated, I always kept like a big old load bearing carabiner on my keys like everybody else, as well as a bottle opener and a bunch of different stuff. And so I, I wanted to kind of merge them together, but do them a little bit. I don't know, a little bit nicer, a little bit better fit and finish, higher tolerances, uh, and add a bunch of other tools and wrenches in between. So that's how the original started. And then as years went on, we, we came out with the uh, XL, which is about twice the size of the original, and then the Mini, which is a little bit smaller for the people who don't want extra weight on their keys. Um, and then the Adventure basically was something where people, if they wanted to keep their keys on their belt loop and didn't have to worry about it um, falling off. You right. Know? That's that's one of the reasons why we did the proprietary um, uh, clip on it. Right. Uh, carabiner clip, and then we added a few other little features. So if you look up at the top end, you know you see there's a, a Phillips head, so a number two Phillips head. And I love that feature right there. You'll see it right there on the tip there. Uh, that's that's actually a tool that I've used a lot more than I expected to. Yeah. Um, oh, and totally. you know, I'll be honest. To begin with, I was like, eh. I'm never going to use that Phillips head. Uh, and 
oddly enough, I'm like months into it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I use that thing more often than I really anticipated. Oh, totally. I mean, you'd be surprised how handy it is. Just that random Phillips head screw, um, and that's what we originally wanted to go for with the the on the original tool, the um, little scoring tool on the top. Yep. You know that that's kind of where it started, and then you know early on, it's kind of more expensive to have an additional mill in there, and right. You know, so we kind of just left the way it was, you know, for the future. Um, and another cool little feature that's on here too on the adventure. So if you notice inside of here, your split ring yep. nests inside of the uh, the hex head. So yep. a lot of people complain early on, like, well, I have it on my keys, but it doesn't really. If I want to like, use that as a wrench, I, I got to take it off. You know? Yeah. So we wanted to be able to, to nest it in there and still have it be a useful wrench. So it the split ring, what you're saying is mm -hmm. it it's got a little groove cut out right there and uh that split ring stays out of the way so if you need to use that mm -hmm. as a hex wrench you can it's yep. not in the way yep so it's just little little features like that so yeah. uh so that was the last variant we did and so one that we've been working on for a long time that will hopefully come next is our rescue tool yeah um it'll have a you know seatbelt cutter and a few other little features in there um but one thing after another man eventually we'll make it happen that's awesome and so. you know uh, these are TSA compliant, which mm -hmm. a lot of people don't take that into account, but that's huge. Yeah. Um, that's a huge deal to have a multi-tool that is TSA compliant mm -hmm. um, and very difficult to find, yeah. mind you. Also, another aspect of this that I really love is uh, the thing that we see mo most often is that people end up using their knives for something they're not mm -hmm. supposed to as yeah. a pry bar, yep. and they end up breaking the tip off. This is something that you can you're going to have on you at all times, mm -hmm. and you can use it as a pry bar. Save yeah. the tip of your knife, people. Save yeah. it. Don't use your knife. Uh, use this. It's always the worst. So Man. I mean, uh, again, that's a, that's a, another great use for this that you're always going to have it on you. So I appreciate that, man. That's fantastic. And you guys also not only have you got all the different sizes, but you've got a bunch of different materials. Yep, yep. So we um, make them in stainless. Uh, so stainless, brass, titanium, copper, um, and uh, our latest thing we started to do. We you know we do seracoding, we do anodized titanium. Uh, we started doing some UV printing ones too. Oh, so, and I brought some of those. I don't know if I can uh, run and grab one really quick. I got it sitting right over there. Hey, can you grab us uh, those pocket tools there? There we go. There we are. Let's see. It's really cool. So I don't know if you know much about this uh, UV printing process. So so it's kind of like a you know remember like the hydro dipped yeah um, yeah coatings. Well, those you like look at it funny and it flakes off. Right. Check that out. That is a that is a very thick coating. That's I mean very durable. You can tell by the way it feels. You'd be really surprised. So we did a lot of testing, um, and just to see you know the durability of it, and to be able to have a full range of color print whatever you want on it. It's just a whole another whole new world uh, to be able to open up into doing different colors and designs. That's um, crazy. And the machines are really cool too. They're they're kind of expensive for what they are, but. Um, it's just it's a different different look to it, man. Um, and I wanted something that wasn't going to be chintzy that was just going to flake off. So right, that is awesome, and that just adds another. So that's and that's one thing we talk about from a marketing standpoint mm -hmm. that people really love. People love being able to have something mm -hmm. that's different that no one else has, um, and to be able to do that and not have to customize it yourself is yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely, um, man. And then, of course, you know, in that same realm, you've got the copper ones, which form that really nice mm -hmm. patina, or if somebody wants to do like a shipwreck finish on it, yep. really freaking cool. Oh, totally, dude. Everybody, and especially in the knife world, man, copper, brass, titanium, I mean, they're yeah, they're all about materials. it. All about it. Now, not only, uh, now, this is a product that we carry, mm -hmm. um, but that's not the only things you guys do. Mm -hmm. You also have your Bushcraft Coffee. Yep. So Bushcraft Coffee uh, is uh, is a coffee company we started. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. So there's yeah. a, a sample of one of our uh, uh, our campfire coffees. So that's how it started. Um, and the fun story, uh, there you go. Booyah. Um, so... Our friend Micah, um, yeah. now our business partner, we used to come out to all the Georgia Bushcraft gatherings, well, still does, but, and he would bring his like gigantic uh, cauldron, <laughs> cast iron cauldron, and just yeah. make coffee for everybody. And I always loved this coffee, and, and I asked him, I was like, hey man, what if we did 
what if we did a really smooth blend of coffee something that i could take camping take into the woods that that i could drink without creamer and sugar and i don't have to have creamer and sugar in most of my right. coffee but on some of like the the, the really stout stuff yeah, yeah. like I, I want something that's so smooth and so easy to drink that anybody could take that camping yeah and not have to worry about bringing creamer or sugar or, or whatever you know what i mean we just want to start with it and without having to accessorize it and right. make it better why not just start better and that's that's how this uh all started so nice and now you've also got you brought us a sample of mm -hmm. your honey yeah we started um, uh, bushcraft honey too which is pretty cool so we uh during the start of 2020 uh pandemic or whatever um I, I wanted to find another hobby, something to do and try out. And keeping bees, man, it was, was something I, I wanted to experiment with. And we got lucky enough to find a, a local beekeeper who is just fantastic. Uh, his name's Jim, and he's amazing. And so he came out to the farm uh, where we host all our events and set up a bunch of beehives. And basically, we just got fully immersed in it. And then we started doing bee classes online and then, you know, got back to normal and then now we do bee classes all the time uh, at our last two gatherings um, he comes out and he his bee company uh, that's also local to, local to us he donates a bunch of beehives and everything you get if you ever want to start keeping bees um, you can win it on the raffle table wow so, so uh, now you've got some new stuff that's in the works as far as your pocket tool and 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 things of that nature what have you got coming down the pipe that's so, uh, really so exciting one of the things for griffin pocket tool that we like i was saying we want to do uh we've been talking about for years is the rescue tool that's one of them uh and we have a few other designs that i'd like to come out with that we've never really touched base on um, with our current designs and so hopefully if I can get my act together this year uh, we could get those rolling and a few other collaborations too I meant to bring with me one of the later thing uh, latest things we did with the adventure tool uh, look at TC's uh, adventure tool but basically inside of the, uh, the the pocket clip there's these little notches and those little notches fit uh, tritium vials pretty uh, pretty well so we so started working with uh, right in there yep and that's a really cool feature too so uh, you know and most people are gonna know tritium from night sights on yep. firearms and that kind of thing uh, and tritium is not something that needs to be charged by light mm -hmm. it glows and it has a really long shelf life yep. considering um i mean several years oh unbelievable and i don't think you uh, a lot of people who haven't experienced them don't understand like i i'll I, i've still got uh I've got a, my nightstand gun is a CZP01 mm -hmm. that has tritium sights that came from the factory. And this one was manufactured, I want to say, uh, somewhere around 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. And the tritium is still super bright. Like I can look over in like dead of night and find the sights on this gun yeah. sitting on my nightstand. So, I mean, and that's a really cool feature to have on a set of keys oh, yeah. as a key ring, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, that's going to be a really useful aspect of that tool, being yeah. able to find them in the dark. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I think that's that's phenomenal. Um, now, as far as your gatherings and that kind of thing, yep. that's one of the big things that you yeah. guys do. How can people find out about when these gatherings are going to happen? So we do. We typically do at least one gathering a year, uh, and we're located about an hour east of Atlanta in Watkinsville, Georgia, or if you're familiar with southeast Athens, Georgia, is the next closest town. Um, and so we do usually one big gathering a year. It's in November. Uh, this year is our 10th gathering or 10th year of Georgia Bushcraft being a company. So uh, it'll be the first weekend of November and it's going to be the most epic, biggest event we've ever done. And I'm telling you, look, just go look us up online. You can find us on Instagram uh, at Georgia Bushcraft uh, or Georgia Bushcraft dot com. Um, we have some of the best instructors, honestly, that come from all over the country that that we're lucky enough to come and hang out with us. I mean, it's it's a really fantastic community of people. Um, our main presenting sponsor is LT Right Knives. They've yep. been there since the beginning. Uh, LT uh, and Mikey and Scooter and all those guys up there, they're really good friends of ours. And they, since the start, they, they've helped us out with giving us a bunch of knives to give away all the time. Um, and that's one of the other cool features too. So 
we have on Sunday, uh, all of our sponsors, they send us all these knives. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And so on Sunday, we lay it all out. And at noon, um, everybody who, who you know came for the weekend gets five raffle tickets. And if you want more, you could buy more. Um, but we lay it all out and then just go. And um, you should see the video from this year. We did a drone shot of it. The line, I mean, it, it was unbelievable. Dude. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that that's just one awesome part of it. But really what our gatherings are, um, Georgia Bushcraft, we, we facilitate a an environment where people who have skills or schools or knowledge that they want to share, and it could be from anything. It's not just bushcraft stuff. We do astrophotography. We've got a guy, Dennis, He's he brings his $30,000, or I don't know how much it is, more than that probably, telescope out, and we look at nebula and stars uh, in the field at nighttime. He projects it on his van um, or pulls up his remote um, uh, whatever thing down in Texas, and we're all looking at that. But then we do blacksmithing. We do trapping. We do... I mean, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of things. And so, so people teach these classes. People come to our events to learn or camp or just be part of the community. And then we have vendors that come out and they sell their products. They, you know, talk about whatever it is, anything from classic camping in their canvas tents to overlanding. We got a, a bunch of overlanding uh, folks and companies that are part of this too. So it's it's all encompassing of the outdoors. Like an outdoor festival. Exactly. That's really yeah. what it is, um, you know, labeled under bushcraft. But uh, it's a it's a really neat environment that everybody, you just got to check it out to, to really see and to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, so they can find this information yep. and all that on Facebook. Yep. Facebook, Instagram, just at Georgia Bushcraft. At Georgia Bushcraft. Uh, GeorgiaBushcraft dot com. Um, we uh, the admission starts. It'll probably start here in the next month or so. We also have a membership. So the membership is almost the cost of the admission. It's hundred dollars for admission or one hundred and twenty five for a yearly member membership, and you get to come to the gathering in November. But we also do like. We call it a trade weekend, but it's like a, a bushcraft flea market is the best way to describe nice. it. So everybody comes out and camps, and then you, like a swap meet, you just bring gear or just come and camp and hang out. So you get to be part of that if you're a member uh, as well. Uh, we do classes all year long. So we've got uh, some, I don't know if you know Bushcraft Kelso, yep. buddy Kelso. So he'll be out uh, teaching classes all throughout this year. Joe Flowers from Condor, Bushcraft Global, Tops Knives. Uh, he's teaching a class for us in May. We have a ton of different structures that are on the property all year long outside of just these two events. So it's, it's a really interesting thing. So, and all of the, all of the events and classes that you guys have ongoing will be on your website and on your social media. Yep. That's really cool. So folks, you got to check them out. Georgia Bushcraft at Georgia Bushcraft, check them out. We're going to get some stickers put up on the wall here in just a few minutes, but Casey, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, man. Absolutely. And uh, folks, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, If you've got any questions, go find these guys and ask us down in the comments below. Uh, They're going to be following along with this video as well. So if you've got any questions about any of this stuff, just ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And again, as always, it's me, TC, here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts or if it does bushcraft, then we carry it. Doing good, kiddo? All right. Oh, it look, look natural. I've not, not done that in a while. Like, some of them are hinting at some of our stuff that we've got coming, like that one. That SMKW sticker. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it'll be right into the tip. Just right. <laughs>